So the lady's a robot and her father's insane. Ouch. No wonder she's nuts. Also, she's apparently the guardian of destruction or something. Poor girl, her destiny really blows. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 33 and 34. And it's season 3, technically. Well, we finally get to see Super Sailor Moon, but that's in the next episode of these two. And we get to find out exactly why the Outer Scouts are so aloof, because apparently they're like, No, we're the strong ones, you just get in the way. We must protect everything, we must prevent Sailor Saturn from awakening, otherwise everything gets blown up! Question, why does Sailor Saturn make everything blow up? What, what kind of fail-safe is that? <laughs> it's not a good fail-safe, and if the three of you know that coming together means that your talismans could resonate, then why are the three of you anywhere near each other, okay? I know you're on the same planet because you were reborn on Earth, but shouldn't you have been keeping your distance from each other? I.e. Uranus, you shouldn't be living with Neptune. Yeah, even though you two seem to have heavy hearts for each other. And then there was the whole apology thing. I'm sorry I confused you. I think you did more than confuse her. I mean, not just the whole, oh yes, I am both sexes. Yeah, that's wonderful. But why did you kiss her? <laughs> I think that's what confused her. <laughs> they didn't include those flashback images in the manga. Like, I'm just trying to feel like, that's not what confused uh, your sex changing did not make her confused. It was, uh, did she kiss me? I've never been kissed by anyone except for this person I'm not going to remember. And Sailor, and I almost said Sailor Tuxedo Mask. You're not that far off, but that's a different story arc. So yeah, this is where things are starting to pick up. It's getting really interesting, and I'm like, wait, wait, robot? Uh, cyborg? Crazy father? Okay, I think he snapped because his wife died, or was he already crazy before and he just snapped further? Ooh, the things I want to know! The things I don't want to know! Please, no! <laughs> also, um, so the only way to save her life is to turn her, uh, is to let her fully awaken as Sailor Saturn, and promise if you do that, everyone dies. So it's the whole one life versus many thing. Okay. Yes, but it seems so misinformed because the Silver Millennium was already in ruins when they summoned Sailor Saturn. So wasn't she just closing the book on the chapter? And what happened to her afterwards? You know, what happened to any of them afterwards that they, you know, did her use of the Silence Clave also destroy her? Or did it just destroy the other Outer Scouts? Yeah, that seems problematic. <laughs> So yeah, the story is getting interesting. I really like where it's going. I'm intrigued to see what's happened next. Also, because of my schedule, I seem to be binging the last two episodes just before we do recordings. <laughs> uh, so I am have them more fully fleshed in my mind when I when we actually use recordings. And I said, well, I kind of remember the first one. The second one I remember more. <laughs> now they're just kind of a blurred mess together. It's like, I want to talk about both of them at the same time. As if they were the same episode. Because you watch them back to back without taking a break in between. Mm -hmm. Also, after the end of the second episode where Chibi Moon is obviously not so alive, cutting right to that happy, cheery, overly sweet ending was such a... <laughs> yeah, that was kind of difficult. Like, did you even plan this out, people? Is this why you have the ending? Just so people have something happy to end on? If that's the case, you probably shouldn't have made it the character who's not breathing. <laughs> Ow, that shift in tone hurts so much. <laughs> also, uh, this is kind of interesting. So she's transforming because of the negative power right now. The evil people, correct? Say they're sad. You saw the black star mark on her forehead, right? She's obviously yeah. possessed. I just wanted to make sure. Because <laughs> remember how they have been implanting things in humans? And how they said earlier that so far they'd only had a couple successful ones? You're looking at one of the successful ones. 
And now on to if there is or how much are there changes from the manga versus the TV show? Okay, we can go there. <laughs> Unless you had more. We can do other of stuff first. Of course I had more. <laughs> but okay. Let's, let's do this first. Jumping all over the place, Lex. You're like a freaking jackrabbit. <laughs> So there were some differences in translation, which does come up, and also it seemed that the ones I was watching this time, the subtitles seemed like they were a little rushed. They weren't grammatically easy to read in some instances. I don't remember one particular line. I can't remember the line itself. I remember going, hmm, that seems a little awkward. And there were a few places for that. Also, when... Kalanite was talking to the last of the witches five through the water mirror and dropped the crystal through the water to give it to her. They were actually in the same room in the laboratory in the manga and Kalanite just handed her the crystal. Not nearly as impressive. Ah. I think the largest deviation was regarding the trip to the movies. In the manga, Hotaru actually says invite some of your other friends and we'll all go together. Hmm. So Chibiusa is not alone at the movie theater waiting for Hotaru. She's there with several of her classmates, whom she then tells after they've waited for an hour to go ahead and go into the movie without her. Then she runs off to go check on Hotaru. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting point. It's like a little girl waiting outside a movie theater by herself. Oops. <laughs> we also skipped Yusagi's father's reaction when he finds out that Mamoru and Yusagi made that chalice together because we get a little side panel of him going Mamoru and Yusagi <laughs> like they were together also we haven't seen Shinji in a while very convenient how you can just shuffle off a younger brother when he's not plot relevant <laughs> that happens to a lot of people who aren't plot relevant yes but he lives in the same house we see Yusagi we see Chibiusa we see her parents it's like he suddenly disappears. Like they went from, oh, we don't need his younger brother anymore. We have a younger sister, child, daughter. Um, she, we'll play her as a little sister. Yeah, that's it. Because <laughs> that's kind of what it feels like a lot of the time. Like Chibi Moon is more of a little sister character instead of, uh, you know, instead of what she actually is, which is like their future daughter. So. Yes, but Usagi's current age, she's not old enough or mature enough to be the mother to Chibi Usa. So they're more like sisters because they're nearer in age and Sailor Moon is a lot more immature. So going back to Super Sailor Moon's transformation and new attack, very nice reuse of footage. It's the exact same animation, they just put sparkly colors on top of it. And drew the details onto her outfit that weren't there before. Yes, but it's the exact same animation, both for the transformation and for the attack. I thought the transformation was a little bit different. The transformation is slightly different. What's really spot on is the attack. It's the same spiraling, the same end pose. They just traded out the whirling heart for a ribbon of hearts. Mm -hmm. Oh, also a little technical thing. The Holy Grail was actually 3D. It was a 3D model. Mm. I picked up on that. I was like, that's a 3D model. I guess they didn't feel like drawing all that little detail there for this one tiny scene. So once again, it's... Much better use of CG animation to speed up scenes that would have been slowed down by um, tedious animation that they can just get rid of and focus on more important things like how the Sailor Scouts look or how they're animating. And I like um, how Sailor Moon was all regal and everything after the transformation. <laughs> yeah, it was very close to the chapter opening still that's in the manga. Because she looks more her princess self than her scout self. Also, a nice touch that everyone gets a meaningless brooch upgrade because she has the Holy Grail. Like, oh, we can't do much else with other Sailor Scouts because animation budget, but hey, we can just change that to a heart. <laughs> well, that's also in the manga. Mm. So, in the original anime, the S stood for Super Sailor Moon, huh? <laughs> because I remember that season being called Super S or something. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was wondering why they were like so like well you can't really tell me this because spoilers so what does the r mean <laughs> r was a filler arc and it stood for romance oh okay <laughs> <laughs> that works 
That's also not a spoiler. Yeah, that, see? <laughs> Everything worked out and then, yay! <laughs> so did you go over all the differences between all the episodes, or was that just the first episode? Well, like I said, it was mostly um, slight translation differences. Um, the big difference was the interaction with in the water mirror and a lack of reaction from Usagi's father. Another thing that might have just been a slight translation change was Usagi and Mamoru were given exclusive credit in the manga because they did all the work. It was just Chibiusa's idea, where I believe in the anime she says the three of them did it, that Mamoru and Usagi helped her. Hmm. So, still enjoying the changes they've made so far? Yeah, I mean, they're not deviating so far that it's actually truly changing any of the story. And like when Kalanite was inattentive in the lab, they went through the effort in the lab to like have made her drop something and make a mess. And see, again, this is dialogue changes, which can just be translations about Dr. Tomoe going on about how... Why did I say it, Tomoe? I have watched... Way too much Kamisama Kiss. Uh, the professor referring to Kalanite as the master's favorite. Mm -hmm. Oh, something I've been forgetting to mention is I really like the music this season so far. The background music really does a good job of making things feel epic or somber or heavy or stuff like that. It's really nice and it. I think it's actually fully orchestrated, or at least very well done synth orchestrated. <laughs> and it does a very good job of evoking the appropriate moods. Mm hmm I just realized that last time when I was watching this these episodes, I was like, wow, that feels, wow, that, that's really good music for this. And it works so well with the scene. And, oh, this makes it feel very royal and important and wow and majestic, all this wonderful stuff. Why didn't I know this is before? Oh, that's because they're doing their job, and they're just making me feel the emotions that go along with this music. <laughs> right now, I'm just appreciating how well it's done. So, are there more thoughts, or should we just wrap things up? <laughs> well, considering that the Outer Scouts want to kill Hataru, and they see Chibiusa running up to Hataru's place, why not interfere sooner? Hmm, yeah, I was like, why aren't they interfering? Aren't they really worried about this? Wouldn't they have stopped her, you know? At least Pluto, considering that she is truly fond of Chibiusa and has spent a lot of time with her, you know, in her previous life. And that doesn't deviate from the manga. They are watching in the manga also, but it's like, really? You declared your intention to kill this girl. Your princess and the inner sailor scouts and... The daughter of the princess all declared that, no, there has to be a better way. But you're going to let her get right there. Not, you know, almost immediately after you've had this conversation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's just like, shouldn't they have done more, you know? You kind of think that this girl's dangerous. Though, going back to the fact that they want to kill her, wouldn't, like, killing her or something? I don't, depending on how they would do it, wouldn't that kind of, like... Almost activate Sailor Saturn? I don't know. Only if she was able to activate to defend herself. And considering that you guys have your talisman slash weapons with you, and you're now in close proximity to Hataru, doesn't that seem like a tactical error? Mm-hmm. I see problems. <laughs> uh, and I'm like... So when Sailor Saturn yanks the brooch off, she also, like, pulls Chippy Usa's soul out or something? How does that even work? <laughs> Did, wouldn't she just de-transform or something? <laughs> I know she actually mm. de-transforms, but why does the whole she's not breathing anymore happen? Yeah, de-transformation usually is only fatal to the princess when she's using the legendary silver crystal, and she usually de-transforms because she has died, not... The other way around. Mm hmm So yeah, that's the only things I have with that particular scene. Also see them going, uh oh, and wouldn't Tuxedo would have realized sooner? Because you know he has this girl in his arms, her weight would feel different, and he wouldn't feel her moving or anything. I mean, even an unconscious person moves slightly. <laughs> and they feel different yes, in weight. But there is a slight distraction of this creature that used to be Hataru and now looks 
a lot like the um, monster from Japanese mythology that controls things with her hair and collects skulls. I was also thinking probably the same creature, thinking along the lines of the character from The Ring and stuff like that. <laughs> mm, which I have not watched. I do not do scary. Yeah, I haven't watched either. I've just seen references to it and I've seen the character, the evil haunting entity from the movie and other references in pop culture, so I'm just guessing. Yes, except the Sailor Moon manga I'm sure came out before the movie The Ring did and the character design in the anime is very close to the manga except that she's more beautifully animated. Mm. I was also going to point out that the character in The Ring was probably based on that particular character in mythology, which probably explains the similarities because they're probably both based on the same mythical creature. Mm-hmm. So, ready to wrap things up? Mm -hmm. well, overall, I liked both episodes, and once again, I'm like, more, please! <laughs> please, animators, can I have some more? That isn't what you s were saying when the season started, and you were going, oh my god, it's going to be coming out every week? <laughs> well, it, it's, it's the fact that I have so much to watch, but I still want to watch it, you know? <laughs> I mean, there's Steven Universe... There's Sailor Moon, there's My Little Pony, there's a bunch of other shows like Chibi Ruby. Mm-hmm. Or is that Ruby Chibi? Ruby Chibi. <laughs> Ruby Chibi, and, you know, I just finally got the DVDs for the Earl and the Fairy and Library Wars. <laughs> so much to watch, so little time. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed our thoughts on... Sailor Moon Crystal, episodes 33 and 34 technically of season three. Thanks for listening. What's one more channel on your account? Please subscribe. If you enjoy Lux's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. If you would like to support Lux's creative talent, you can check out his Patreon or check the link below for commission availability.